Mm. Okay, this Hangout on air is live, and I should be seeing a uh, little something something over here in my Gmail. It looks looks like we're live. Okay. Am I right? Cool. I'll get that notification half an hour late. Yeah. <laughs> YouTube uh, algorithm. Breaks YouTube again. algorithm breaks again when Gene's doing something doesn't doesn't put me through. All right, so I also turned the volume off on my other monitor because I heard myself talking to myself. All right, got a bunch of people online over here. Hey, folks, uh, welcome to Regular Guy Mountain Biking. This is Gene, and this evening we're going to talk about hardtail mountain bikes. Uh, I've got uh, three other guys on the show tonight. I'll introduce them in just a moment, but specifically we're talking about hardtail mountain bikes and the different kind, the, the new aggressive kind of new geometry. Why would you get a new hardtail type of hardtail mountain bike? So what is it, whatever that means, we'll find out in just a minute. Before we get going, let me go and get some people. Well, someone's beating the hell out of something over there. So, <laughs> I can't fall. <laughs> all right, so let's start with you then. So we're going to start with Andy, uh, 732 MTB. Andy, I'm going to put you on the spot. Say hello to everybody. Hey, what's up, guys? My name's Andy. Uh, I have the 732 MTB channel. We usually do uh, group mountain bike rides in the Jersey area, um, Tri-State. And this is my hardtail. It's a Cannondale Beast of the East, uh, painted black. And yeah. Perfect. It's a little weird. <laughs> We're going to get into all the details of everybody's bikes in just a little while. But um, I'm going to put uh, Joseph on the line over there. And um, go ahead, man. You're on the mic. Hey everyone, uh, my name is Joseph. I'm from Trail Features. I kind of run uh, a bit of a camera geek slash cinematic mountain bike video channel. And uh, right now I have a Chromag hardtail behind me that's disassembled. Uh, and there's a good reason for that. And I'll get to it later in the live stream. Oh, I didn't know about that. That's going to be interesting. All right, there we go. And we've got Mike on the line. Go for it, Mike. You say hello. Hey, guys. Mike, YouTube channel and Instagram is all Mike Likes Trails. And see you now. I've got a bike in a box. So <laughs> I think we'll uh, we'll explain it after I open it up. Cool. But it's definitely a hardtail. All right. And I'm going to cook off Mike. So now we should be bouncing back and forth when people start talking. So, folks, here's, here's the deal. Um, I just recently got a uh, new hardtail, the Norco um, Torrent. I've got a a dirt jumper over there, but I mainly just built that one up for a video series. Uh, in fact, Andy's kind of pissed off at me because I built this beautiful bike up and I basically haven't even really <laughs> ridden it much. He's like, Gene, when are we going to use that bike? Um, he'll probably use it more than I use it. But anyway, um, I do have the Norco and I, I like, like everybody, we're going to talk about the bike specifically. But um, the reason why I wanted to do this show is because the four of us, we've got some specific reasons why we have our hardtails or why we're building them up or why we're doing some different things to them. And when a lot of us started, so I, I, I've turned 47 this year. So a lot of us know what a hard tail bike means, especially at, in my age bracket, right? That's all we had when we first started riding, even all we had when we first started getting into mountain bike riding. So why would one now go back to a hard tail? when things have changed so much and they've progressed with full suspension. And part of my answer for that, and while we're going to talk to everybody, is that the hardtail bikes that we have today, that Norco is not, is not the hardtail that I started mountain biking on. So I thought, I figured, let's talk about what's different about the hardtails now. Why would you guys buy one? Why has, why did Mike just buy one? He's got a box. He's going to do an unboxing over here, which is great. I'm going to get a free unboxing on a video. I didn't have to even pay, buy anything. Um, what makes these hardtails different? And um, we'll go from there. And, and, you know, why would you pick up one? And I've got a lot of people online that, you know, I'm seeing people saying, yeah, I just got one. I'm looking to get one. So obviously it was a pretty good topic to pick over here. So um, let's start with something like what kind of places? Why would you use a hardtail nowadays? Is there a specific reason, guys, why you decided to go and build up your hardtail? In fact, let's start with you, Joseph, because I know you built yours from scratch and where Mike's going as well. You, you could have built whatever you wanted to. You had to buy all these parts on your own to build this bike, and you decided to go to a hardtail. Tell us, my friend, why did you do that? 
Um, so it kind of, it kind of comes from two places. Uh, like you said, you know, I grew up on hardtails. My first real mountain bike was a 98 GT Ricochet. And I loved the crap out of that bike. And the single, one of the biggest regrets that I have in life is getting rid of that frame. Um, because I didn't have enough room in my apartment. I didn't fit it anyways, but I kind of wish I had hung it on the wall. Um, you know, I fell out of mountain biking for a while and I got back into it, uh, like four or five, five or six years ago. And I bought like, uh, a hardtail, a Kona hardtail that was on sale for like four fifty, And I started riding that and like, it, it was capable of doing a lot of good things, but like being a more budget oriented bike, I kind of hit the, the limits and I started trying to tweak it and tune it and get the more abilities out of it that I could. And eventually I ended up just building a whole new hardtail, a, a raggly big wig. And then I rode that and I loved the crap out of it. And I did like a video where I showed that I got the Yeti and then the raggly just kind of sat in the corner for a while. And I downsized it to make it fit my girlfriend. That was a mistake um, because I gave her too much bike. <laughs> and then like, even though I had uh, a full carbon fiber Yeti, I missed having a hardtail. There's just something about a hardtail, especially a hardcore hardtail. And like you said, like we don't, we don't have hardtails like we had back in the nineties. These things are legit. You can send them down double diamonds if you're crazy enough and they'll take it. It's just a question of whether you can take it. So that <laughs> was a good point. Good point. The Joe, what is the, uh, what's the geometry on that Chrome mag? I'm just curious. Uh, pretty insane. It's got a 65 degree head angle. It can take a 160 fork, 29 or 27 plus. Um, I, the, the chain stays are pretty short on it. So it's, it's a very sporty bike. Things like a Frankenstein. You could turn into anything. <laughs> Basically, I mean, you can run like 130, 140 on it, have a little bit more cross country, or you can just rake it out and mm -hmm. send it. And that, yeah. that's part of the deal. Now, these frames. So, folks, here's the thing. I can pretty much guarantee that of all of us on here, none of us went to a hardtail because we wanted to save weight or we wanted to race or, you know, these bikes were designed more to send it. Like that, that, that Norco, that's a 32 pound bike. I waited. I didn't, that's not a light bike, but just like Joseph said, I can beat the pus out of that bike. That bike will take way more than I'll ever be able to handle. And they're just insane now. And, and it's the geometry that they're a little more slack. Um, they're starting to tuck in the, 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 the chain stay a little bit. So you got, you got the playfulness from the back, but yeah. you got the, the, you know, it's raked out in the front and Remember, folks, the components that are available for these bikes have been kicked up. When you think hardtail in the past, you think you think V brakes. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But hey, now, that was awesome back in the day. That was good. Yeah. But now, I mean, I, I keep pointing to it, and I, I absolutely love it. But that bike came with a DVO Diamond, their high end fork. So that is no no joke. So these hardtails, you could take these things to bike parks if you have the skill set to take them. I mean, okay, I mean, you, you watched Phil, um, skills with Phil take a Walmart bike to, so I don't want to say that. I mean, if you have the skills, you could do whatever you want, but Phil's <laughs> in another category. I'm just saying, you know, if you had it, my, my buddy, my buddy, Eric, he's got the same Norco. We took this baby to, to Mountain Creek and he just did everything. Very talented rider. But I mean, like you can do what you want with these things now. They're, they're no joke anymore. Yeah, for sure. I mean, it's also nice in the pocket, too, because, you know, you're paying a lot less with a hardtail than you are with a full suspension. And as, you know, people start to begin mountain biking, you know, that's kind of what they're geared towards, too, is a hardtail with some good components. And especially with, you know, things like the NX coming out, um, the SRAM GX, like mm -hmm. you can get a lot for your money nowadays as compared to before where you're paying at least like 2000 to 2500 for a good uh, a good hardtail. Now um, the savings have come up, and it's, there's a lot of stuff to get out there. That's a good point. That's a good point. But something else I want to ask is, and I'm reading this on a lot of the comments, um, people look like they're building their bikes more when they go to a hardtail. It seems like you can 
build it. Like, I, I mean, Andy, you and I, we didn't, we bought it together like that, but you know, yeah, you know, Joseph and, uh, um, Mike, they're building theirs and I'm getting a lot of comments. My first bike I built, um, you know, a lot of things on Chromags, which I want to talk about the, 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 the actual metal in a minute uh, too, but it seems like, and I'm just curious about you guys online. If you were going to build the bike is a hardtail one you would go with first, you know, Chris West, you know, he builds all his bikes, you know? So it just seems like that might be something that you might do more if you were going to build a bike. What are your, what are your thoughts? I mean, um, definitely one of the easiest thing and people have brought it up in the chat, like hardtails are far more simplistic, right? You know, you don't have to deal with linkage. You don't have to deal with eye to eye measurements on the shock and the, the progression of everything. It's, it's just, just tubes. And, yeah. you know, you can put a fork on there and as long as you stay within a certain margin, you know, like if it's optimized for a 150, you might be able to bring it up to a 160, but that's about at the max you would want to do. And for me, it's kind of like that whole building the bike for your riding style. Like I could have completely raked out my Chromag if I wanted to, but I actually wanted it a little bit more reserved but I wanted it bomb proof. So everything that I put on there was purposefully picked to be able to fall down the side of a mountain and then just kind of straighten it up when I find it. Yeah, man. Is that how you got that dent, Joe? <laughs> maybe, <laughs> maybe we'll, we'll get to that later. Yeah. But that, that's part of the deal. You, you have the ability to build your own bike. The other thing too is not for nothing guys, but even if you want to buy a full suspension frame only, it's pretty expensive. So if you want to go through the challenge of building your own bike and, you know, the pleasure of picking your own components out, you might want to start with a, a hardtail because it's, it's the price points where it's going to be because not for nothing, you don't build a full suspension bike to save money. Sorry, you don't. It's cheaper to just buy. Hell, it's even cheaper to buy one that doesn't even have the components you like rip those components off, sell them to get the components you want. Cause it's just, it's tough unless you've accrued some parts over time that you're going to transfer over to your next full suspension frame. Then that's a different story. But if you're going to build it from scratch, you know, I mean, it's, it's, it's kind of arguably which way do you want to go? And I think you've got a lot of different hardtail frames to choose from. Yeah, yeah the, definitely. The, I mean, uh, the price on hardtails can vary the, the, like that Chromag is like almost an $800 frame. So, I mean, that's not really affordable. Right. It's affordable compared to the full suspension, but you can get, especially if it's like an older model, you can get a hardtail frame that's a good one for like $450, $500. Now, I was going to say that the deals you find, the one I picked up was only 200 bucks. It was Black Friday closeout, but yep. it's all old spec. So the reason I picked it was because I can dump all the stuff that's on my Santa Cruz 5010, which is still a non-boost bike and all the same wheels and everything. Everything same deep post ring. So I figured it was a cheap investment for winter beater just to have fun with. For $200, that's a steal, man. <laughs> yeah. So so wait, wait, hold, hold on, Mike. Let me make sure I got this right. So you're taking your full suspension, stripping everything off, and putting it on a hardtail? Yes, for the winter and until whenever I decide to Hmm. undo that or just buy another full suspension <laughs> see that's dangerous because you know i've built whole bikes around a seat post <laughs> just spare part kicking around you're like i should really sell this and suddenly you have a new bike no but but that's smart though because especially where, where we live at you know and kind of like the northeast we get all this snow and all this crab especially salt like from transporting your bike on the road yeah i've gone through bearings like crazy especially on the full suspension I've gone through um, Joe might know this, the switch infinity bearings. I've gone through um, the wishbone bearings. I've gone through the headset bearings. I've had to upgrade every bearing on that bike. And it's just cause when I got it back in November, I wrote it in the snow, I wrote it in everything. So, I mean, switching over to a hardtail and keeping it simple for the winners, you know, it's, it's a good idea. Yeah. Now true. you do have to be careful about, you know, steel and salt on the roads, you know, definitely, um, you know, shower your bike when you get it home because you don't want that sitting in there. Yeah. But yeah, man, I took apart a Switch Infinity system once and that was to sell 
my SB5 Plus, and I was thinking to myself, man, I'm glad I'm selling this because I don't want to do this again. <laughs> well, you know what? Let, let's talk about this real quick because you just, you just brought this up, Joe. You said steel, and that's uh, more that's coming up on the chat over here. I don't know of many, and chat or folks, please correct me or fill me in, but I don't know. When I think of full suspension, there's aluminum or there's carbon. I don't really hear much of a steel full suspension bike. There, there may is. be, you know, so don't, don't pick on me. Okay, so so obviously you're going you're gonna to help me with those because I don't really know of many, but I know of a lot of steel hardtails. And one of the reasons for that is the metal is just a little bit more flexible. It's not quite as stiff. And you, you take that with a hardtail and you've got this feel that, that some of the folks just, they don't want to ever give up. So I'm curious uh, like, you know, about yours. Tell us about the, the Chromag. Okay. I'm going to have to pull up a, a brand in a little bit because now you have me going down rapid. But to talk about like the different materials, right? Um, to, to summarize, and this is extremely high level simplistic. You can fall down the rabbit hole Googling this if you want to learn more about it. But um, aluminum is usually a little bit stiffer. They've gotten a lot better with using different types of alloys, different types of heat treatment, and different types of like tube diameters and all that stuff. Uh, so it's gotten a little bit closer. But whenever someone says steel is real, they're kind of talking not only about just how robust steel is, but the feel it bends and not like, you know, bends as in like, but like it, it has this flex to it. That's hard to describe. And each company has their own unique take on it, which is usually why you see people sticking with a hardtail frame for so long. Cause they found that perfect feel. Mm -hmm. it, it just has that perfect amount of flex that it, it does take out a little bit of the cha uh, trail chatter. Um, it, it really is a different experience and it's hard to describe until you get on a good steel hardtail. And, and I just heard about that. I've heard that. And I, I'd love to try one. I haven't tried, tried tr ridden one yet, but that's what I've heard. I, I, I went to the Chromag site. They're not cheap bikes. I was like, I was actually surprised, you know, how, how expensive they are. Um, yeah, you, 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 you pay for that. But, but Surly is another brand that makes a lot of steel bikes. And people, and you see a lot of steel single speeds. That was another comment that came out there. I want to build a hardtail single speed. That's also see a lot of single speed options too, you know? Yeah. There's um, a lot of different materials. So many. Yeah. I know they got a couple titanium ones. Um, I know Trek has like a weird aluminum that they uh, uh, they claim is pretty light and stiffer than most, <laughs> most chromoly frames, but... Um, there's, there's a lot of different things out there. Decoupling thing on the C tube. I forget exactly what they call it. Some type of isometric and their hard hardtail. There's a little piece that um, actually lets the frame flex against the C tube. Oh yeah, a soft tail. Or yeah. I think they call it a soft tail instead of full suspension. Yeah, it has like on the chop on the top uh, uh seat stay right there. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, there's like usually like a rubber buffer or like Something, something that has a little bit of give. I, I think I've seen that before too. Uh, well, what? Uh, well, didn't didn't Canada have something like that called? Wasn't the scalpel something like that at one point? Right. I think like the older one, right? The older yeah. Scalpel, probably. Yeah. Well, some. This also came. Let me scroll up over here. It was a uh, uh, um, Brent Brennan, Brennan Cooper, Brennan. I think I hope I got your name right over there. But he brought up a good point. Um, one of the reasons why I decided to go with the bike that I went with is because um, plus tires, personally, I think plus tires, especially fat bike tires too, they're bringing the hardtails back, man. They're, they, I think they're a huge reason why hardtails, that, that, that's a big reason why I have mine because I can fit a 3.0 on, on that beast back there. So personally, I think that hardtails are also becoming more popular again because of the high-end components the amazing value you can get on forks, the new geometries they're pushing out there, and the fact that you can ride plus size tires. And I know Andy, your your uh, beast of the east can run plus size tires. Mike, you were saying yeah. you might not be able to, but I'm curious what you're going to do. Um, Joe, I have no idea what, what fits on the Chromag. I'd be curious for you to chime in. But but Andy, what are your thoughts on that point? Because I think you had bigger tires and went a little smaller. So yeah. 
they See, came they came spec with 3.0s um i have the original 3.0 in the front and i got a vittoria in the back um i mean for the snow they're great i dropped that pressure down to like 10 psi and i'm you know rolling through everything uh it's definitely a confidence booster especially you know when you're going fast on turns and stuff um i decided to light it and up a bit and i went down to 2.5s hmm. which um you gave it more of like that yeah, it gave him more of that hardtail feel, and the rims are, I think they were 35 wide, if I'm not mistaken. Um, it, uh, it didn't work, really. I bent the rim in the back, and I went right back to the 3.0s, but um, I think I'm going to keep it like that at 3.0s and still ride it like that. Yeah, I, I just, I just put the 3.0s on this bike, and I haven't got to try it yet because the snow came down. I was going to use it in the snow. It was just, it, yeah. did, it was a disaster. Dude, but, that's, um, that's, that's, that's actually perfect. The mid fats. Mm -hmm. I mean, just drop the pressure a little bit, a little bit more, just a yeah. smidge. Otherwise, you'll you'll bend your rim too. Uh, but yeah, like I plan on using. You know, you're asking the Chromag can fit uh, 2.8s. That's about the max. It you can put threes on there, but if you really get aggressive in the turns and the tire and the rim starts to flex, you'll have it rub against the chain stays, and that's that's no good to rub away the paint on a steel. <laughs> steel frame <laughs> good point well I, I i specifically bought this one because i wanted to put threes on and the reason why i wanted to get the threes is because as much as i love my fat bike and i really did i have a, a, a list of reasons why i ended up selling it but that's that's not what i want to go into right now but i didn't want a fat bike but i wanted a bike that's like a mid fat which is what the three is even a two eight kind of dwindles into mid fat but i think a 3.0 is a really yeah. good mid fat like a 3.0 tire is a pretty big tire and from where i see it we don't groom our snow our snow here so even if i had a four inch tire if it's three or four inches of snow and it gets squished i can't ride through it anyway i don't have the strength so a 3.0 is perfect it's a perfect tire to take out on places like alaire six mile um stewart all those places are just going to rip with this thing. Plus, I can take it into Way Way Yonda. Got to pick my lines better, which came up on the chat. Um, but I've got just enough cush to take a little bit of the edge off. But that's why I also went with this bike. It's it's technically my new fat bike as well. It's almost a two for one deal. Yep. Yeah. Really. I have. Um. Well, you seen uh, Gene? We have a lot of guys that ride fat bikes in um in our group that we ride with. And those guys take their stuff down Mountain Creek and everything, and you know they swear by it. But yeah, I tried it out once, and it's just like it's a whole different feel of ride. Like you don't get that poppiness. It's not as reactive as you know 3.0 would be. Yeah. Well, the other thing too is once you start going bigger like that, too much bigger than a 3.0. Three is about as big as I want to go anyway. In our rocky area, it's very hard to find that line because it's hard. Like a lot of times we're like like a needle through the rocks trying to fit where to yeah. go. So anything bigger. So Mike, what are you going to get to put on, on your bike? What, what can you fit on that frame? So I'm hoping to fit a two five, but one of the reasons I wanted to test this setup was to see if a non plus tire could get me through the winter, through the snow and all this. So I'm hoping a two five wide trail fits on the back. Uh, the front's not a problem, even though it's not a boost fork, I've put two fives on the front. I could probably even fit the two six um, in the standard fork, but usually it's the rear that's more of the problem. Um, I don't want to unbound it too much. Mm -hmm. But the thing I want to test is how well the insert works. So I have the insert that um, I would actually need to get the bigger one for a two eight or a three zero. I have the medium one, which is good up good up to the two five, the uh, the Victoria Airliner one. So for me on this bike, I don't know if you could see the over here. The, uh, that aluminum hardtail was actually my friend who just left it for the summer because he wasn't going to use it and he doesn't like 29ers. But that's the first hardtail I rode with the insert. And it really took all the stuff I didn't like about a hardtail where it kind of just the chatter would kind of zing you. And like, you know, if you kind of landed a bunny hop, you just felt that extra, you know, through your hands. It, um, you know, got all annoying. So that insert with about three to four PSI less than normal really felt good. So I'm hoping that putting it into the hardtail, I'm going to have a feeling like that where I actually enjoy riding it. Because I didn't like riding hardtails. <laughs> Even with, I had a full rigid fat bike at one point. I've ridden plus bikes. I just, 
I always wanted to go back to my full suspension. Um, so I'm hoping this experiment um, makes me uh, enjoy the hardtail again. Well, I, I have the bike. The tires that came with my bike were the um, were the Minion 2.8s. So the 27.5 2.8s. So you're welcome to give those a shot if you want or something like that. If I don't know if that's going to be too big or whatever, but um, give them a whirl or whatnot. But I think that the larger tires are another big option with uh, hardtails. The other thing too is you're seeing some cool geometry and cool. Well, this has been around forever, but making it available again. The fact that you've got the sliding options in the rear, um, uh, like the 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 the, the, the dropouts. dropouts. Thank you. Yeah. So um, mine doesn't have that, but you've got the the Trek. Um, was the stash right? The stash has that. Yeah, I think it's a stash. Yeah, the stash has got that. The karate uh, monkey, the, the new uh, the new karate monkey has that too. That's another cool one. Um, I also like the salsa. What is the wood? I forgot what the name. The, the salsa that was yeah wood smoke. That, I thought that was a beautiful bike. I just I couldn't couldn't find the I connection. I almost in got it. that over the Chromag when I was. Yeah. Or actually, no, I'm sorry. I almost got that over the Ragley, but the Ragley was too good of a deal to pass up. Gotcha. Well, is that the car great. the carbon one? The wood smoke? Yeah. Yeah. Right. That's nice. So yeah. I know. I was I was gonna get the timber jack before I got this. I just got gotcha. a good deal on this, which is why I got it. But the Timberjack was one of the ones I was going to get. Salsa okay. is the company that's like, <laughs> when they when they make a bike, the biggest reason is because someone was sitting there at a bar probably went, wouldn't it be cool if, and then a bike idea formed. Like, <laughs> you know, the first full suspension 29, 29 plus bike. No one was asking for it, but Salsa was like, here it is. Here you go. <laughs> That's why I love salsa. Yeah, that that that's a pretty pretty cool pretty cool bike. So I was when I was first looking for a hardtail, it was going to be uh, that salsa was up there, um, the uh, the Trek was in the mix, and so was this Norco. The Norco doesn't have that option though, um, and the uh, the Santa Cruz Chameleon is also uh flexible like that so you're throwing in these new geometries and these new options and these fat tires it's pretty cool so that's what yeah. i'm going with that's what i'm going with right now so you could probably even switch over to 29s in the summer yeah the plus bikes sure sure i mean i think i think just how it works if you have a plus size bike a, a, a 27 five you could put a 29 on there and you should be okay you know yeah yeah, almost everything does. There's a few outliers that don't. Like an Ibis Mojo 3, for some reason, just I think because they don't put a 29 fork on it, mm -hmm. supposedly doesn't do 29s. But yeah, mo in most cases, I think anything that does 27.5 plus also handles 29. Yeah. So now, John, um, why is your bike in pieces right now? Or Joe, what, 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 why no. do you keep on calling you Jonathan? <laughs> No, that's, that, 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 that's pretty rotten of me. I'm, I'm such a, I'm such a jerk. I'm such a jerk. I, 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 I could just. You're gonna do like you did to BKXE and give me a, a thumbs down now, aren't you? <laughs> no, no. Um, blame okay. it on turning 47. What's that? I said blame it on turning 47. Yeah, probably. <laughs> Um, so why is my Chromag uh, torn down right now? The reason why is because. Uh, recently I, um, had a friend come into town and they wanted to go riding and there was like this really nice green loop that, um, that they knew about. And we're like, yeah, let's go check it out. Cause this was right after I hurt my back and yeah. like, I was good enough that I could start riding again, but I was still like trying to get, it was more of like the mental game at that point. You know, after you crash, you have to build yourself back up. So um i gave them my chromag and i rode the gt and i had just put on some new uh 27 plus tires that i really hadn't tested out but i really wasn't a fan of mm -hmm. uh mm -hmm. the wtb ranger um that's a really fast rolling tire but absolute crap in loose loose over hard pack which is basically oh, really? what we have here is that like yeah, the xc like, tire right what's that more like an xc tire <laughs> It, yeah, basically, it's more like a bike packing tire, you know, in the plus size. So uh, we were we were having a good ride, had a great ride. We were on what turned out to be our last lap. Um, 
and they went into a berm and it wasn't like they were being stupid or squirrely. Um, it literally just while they were exiting the berm, it just the, the rear tire kept going and they slid out. And it was like this slow motion crash because we weren't <laughs> going that fast. And he slid right into a tree and the uh, the down tube just just went right into it. And at first I was like more worried about the dude because I was like, oh, man, are you OK? Is everything all right? And, you know, then we started looking at the bike and we started noticing something was loose. And let me share my screen here real quick. Uh -oh. uh, hold that thought. There it is. Then we noticed this, like the place where it hit on the down tube was right where one of the uh, the cable guides was. And it just gave perfect leverage and it just bent it in the tube wicked bad. And I, I reached out to Cromag and I asked them, I was like, do you think this is OK? And they're like, probably but uh they never really gave it the clear thumbs up fortunately i talked to them about it they're going to give me a new frame at 50 percent off um mm -hmm. so i'm going to talk to them about it and get the latest model now one of the benefits of steel is if i really wanted to i could find a local bike welder and have them fix that down to and maybe get it repainted if i wanted to they, they could awesome. just cut literally cut the piece out, re-weld it, right? And 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 make it new. Is that what they could um, do? There's a couple ways they could do it. I would leave it to them to decide the best method, but that would be the worst case scenario is they would cut out the tube and weld in a new one. That's that's pretty cool. Yeah, you can't really do that with I mean, well, I guess you can do it with aluminum if you know how to weld aluminum. They can't can't even do it with Once that. Once aluminum's compromised, that's um usually that's hydroformed, where basically they have um all these special riggings and everything and they basically form the metal using a lot of pressure and air and water it's really cool how they do it but usually once once a down tube's done or if that happened on aluminum frame chuck it it's done wow. steel you can actually fix hmm. wow get a get a slide hammer that'll tap right out <laughs> <laughs> exactly so let's let's do this a little bit i did title the video should you buy a hardtail mountain bike so let's talk about some reasons why you should, why you shouldn't, why you did. Okay. Um, I'm going to take a first pass at it. And I'm not going to go through everything because I'll be talking forever. But I do feel that, um, well, why should you buy a hardtail bike? Number one, I'm going to say that they're less expensive than a full suspension bike most of the time. So if you just want to get into mountain biking, I'd rather you see rather you get a bike and start doing it than not ride at all okay so sure get off your ass ride a bike hardtail or not it's just great that you're riding a bike but in some areas i've got a lot of friends that live in southern jersey where the terrain really is great for hardtail bikes where it's almost to the point where it might not even justify spending the money on a full suspension even if you were doing it for years and years and years because the area that you live in you're just like buying it for the sake of buying it. So um, I'm going to take that as my first pass. I've got some other reasons, but you know, let's let's Andy. We'll go down the line over here. For folks that are thinking about a hardtail, what should they think about? Why should they buy a hardtail? What What are your thoughts on that? I think, like you said, especially if they're entry level. I mean, if you're entry level, that's the route you want to go just to to build up your skill set and you know start actually riding different trails, especially in the area that you live in. Um, if you lived in a rockier area, like, I don't know, say like Arizona or where, where Joseph's at, where there's a lot more mountains, you might want to gear towards more, a cheaper full suspension, like his GT that he has. Um, but it just really depends on the area that you live in, the trails that you have and really your experience. Um, like you said here, South Jersey, maybe Florida, those are like prime places for uh, hardtail mountain bikes, but I mean, I think that's what mainly everybody starts off on is a hardtail just cause you know, that's kind of the, when you first get into mountain biking, you never expect, you know what, I'm going to spend two grand on a bike. You know, people <laughs> look at you like, are you crazy? Two grand on a bike. So, um, you know, the first hardtail bike I got was $600. I remember it was like, it was a Scott scale 910. It was like a full XC bike. 
Um, not aggressive at all. It was, I think, the head tube angle was like, I don't know, 70 or something like that. It was really, was it 70? I don't know. It was straight up. I just remember, like, I couldn't do nothing with that bike. I tried <laughs> to jump and everything. I couldn't do anything with it. But, um, yeah, I mean, the hardtails now are, they're just completely different. Like you said, the, the chain stays yeah, are yeah, super yeah. short. Like, I could barely fit my finger in mine, and they're just super fun now, especially, you know, when you're starting off. What about your thoughts, Jonathan? Or Joseph? <laughs> um, can so we just change I'm that? Can I, I can't edit this. This is live, right? Yeah. <laughs> uh, anyways, sorry. There was like a phone ringing somewhere in my office. What um, the hell's wrong with me? <laughs> I don't know. Such an asshole. Um, I'm such an asshole. I'm so sorry. I'm so I'm sorry. I'm such. Are you, are, you, are you recording this YouTube? I am such an asshole. <laughs> it's okay. I, I forgive you. I'm, I'm putting uh, a sticky on the note right now on my screen. His name yeah. is not Jonathan. I'm yeah. such an asshole. Um, so anyways, what do I think about um, hardtail? So I'm echoing a lot of you guys that, first off, it's the easiest way to get in the sport because it's the most affordable way. Um, so, like, I'm just going to be repeating what you said, but I want to add that even if you have been riding for a while it's totally awesome to get a hardtail because it forces you to pay attention to line choice it forces you point. to uh, really refine your skills because when i was on the sb yeti sb5 plus that was basically a plus size enduro bike even though it was a trail bike i mean 150 front fork um five inches of travel in the rear it, it made me a sloppy rider because I could literally just blow over everything. So when I got on a non plus size bike, full suspension, I was a wreck. And like mm. I <laughs> ate so many times because I was just like, oh, I'm just going to roll through this. And suddenly my front tire gets caught or my rear end, you know, jumps up and I almost go OTB. So it makes you a better rider. And I kind of want like one of the reasons I got the GT that entry level full suspension bike is kind of reemphasize it's not the bike, it's the rider. And you should never feel bad about the type of bike you're riding. Cause I've had so many people look at their entry level bike and like kind of feel bad about riding it. Like, yeah, this is all I could afford. I'm like, no, it's not, it's a bike. It's getting you out on the trails. Yes. Enjoy it. Cherish it. I yeah, really wish yes. I had never gotten rid of my first bike because it meant so much to me. Good point. That's, that's an excellent point. I mean, I hate when people do that and say, ah, uh, you know what, dude? First of all, I've watched people on much lesser bikes than mine clear the ever loving Jesus out of the most hardest things and blow right by me. And, and I, I'm sitting here going, you're just such a spoiled brat, Gene. You know, you just <laughs> buy, you don't even deserve the bike you, uh, the, or the bikes. I've got a line of them over here. When you've got some guy riding a, a crappy bike, I forgot what, what, what thing this was, but there was some mountain biking event. Don't, I'm not going to get into the details because I can't remember. All I know is the guy showed up with a Walmart mongoose type of fat bike and he beat everybody, everybody on everything. And everyone was all pissed. He was, he was some uh, uh, oil rigger guy from like the oil rigs out in the ocean. He came in and I watched the video. I watched him do all the stuff. He's doing everything on this old bike and just get off your ass and ride. And, and you might be pretty amazed on how good you could be on anything. Yeah. Then you'll be surprised at the things you could do with a full suspension or, you know, a lighter bike or anything for that matter, really. Um, quick side story. One of the, one of my buddies in Austin, he's like this OG mountain biker. He still rides like a late nineties, early 2000, uh, karate monkey full rigid, like 2.1, 2.2 2 tires clipped in. And I went riding with him for the first time. I was on my Yeti. And, you know, I, I had the audacity, the ego to think in the back of my head, man, I'm really going to have to sandbag today because, you know, I'm just going to be able to blow through all this stuff. And he's going to be like struggling through everything because Austin's really rocky. He dropped my simple butt so many times. It wasn't even funny. <laughs> that guy, he like, you know, we're on like a hill like this covered in loose boulders. And he's just, boop, 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 and I'm like pushing my bike 
up the hill. And he's like, yeah. man, this is a fun trail. Yeah. And you're I, just like, yeah, screw you. I got a real funny story. Well, yeah, pretty funny. Um, I just had gotten the SB5 and we went to Allergene. And um, I don't know if you know those guys from NJMTB. They all wear the blue and orange jerseys. Mm -hmm. yeah. And uh, he was doing trail work. And this guy was on, I'm not sure what kind of frame it was, but I know he mentioned it was steel. It was a single speed. It looked like it was a 29er. But that's not the funny part. He took us through this uphill called the grind through the pine. And it's it's a pretty short uphill. I mean, it's probably like 100 feet of climbing. But it's it gets kind of steep in some sections. This guy was carrying a chainsaw on his back. Oh, my God. Um, shovels and, like, a whole bunch of crap to, like, fix the trails. And he just dusted us. Like, this guy and, I don't know, Gene, he had to be at least, I would say, in his 50s if I were to guess. But this guy was just... <laughs> Like back to the future. That's how fast he was going. It's just, it's just insane. You know what, what some of these hardcore dudes and the, again, brought back in from the chat. Some of these dudes are single speed riders. They're rocking yeah. single speeds. I know a local guy over here, Dave Van Wharton. Um, okay. It, it's a, it's a high end pivot part. So it's not exactly where we're going with this story around some of the, you know, more budgetary is it's a high, but it's a hard tail single speed and he's going through everything that we could barely get through a jungle he's just doo -doo 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 -doo. in fact at one point i got stuck on a rock garden he started hopping on the bike until i got my fat ass out of the way and then he rode right back right by me and i'm like you know really paul, paul the punter asked the question where's the farthest place you've taken your hardtails what was how, how far what, what do you say how far away or something yeah the oh crap i lost it uh, uh, what's the furthest place from your home you've taken your hardtails to ride? Well, I, 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 I'm a quick one. Right down the street. I only just got the bike, Paul. So I haven't really <laughs> done anything with it yet. But but actually, the funny I'm glad actually funny you brought that up. This will be probably one of the bikes that I'll take to most of the further away places because most of the further away places from where I live are not as rocky as what I have here. So again, six mile. They're yeah, all yeah. a couple hours away. Um I'll probably take it pretty far. The other reason why I might take it around a lot is something we brought up before. There's less parts to it. It's a very reliable bike. There's no linkage. I've had linkage mm -hmm. bolts come out and things to worry about. You don't. You don't deal with any of that. You just. You just. You just freaking ride it. But um, other than the fact that I definitely made mine. We could, wow, I'm just looking at how much we could talk about over this topic over here. <laughs> um, I I made sure I made mine tubeless. Because yeah. on the op opposite side, these bikes, they're going to hit, you know, so I don't want to pinch flat. So air pressure is so important on a bike like a hardtail to really, that's your suspension. So you're really going to mess around with air pressure. That's why I like the plus tires because you've got more room to play. But on the other hand, you don't want to be running a plus tire with 10 to 19 PSI and have tubes in there. Just in, in, not where we live anyway. Yeah. Uh, the furthest I bought. Like when I first built this uh, Cro-Mag, I actually brought it here to Colorado when I was living in Austin. Uh, my girlfriend and I had a trip planned here uh, for Christmas, so I decided to bring it up here. And I didn't get as uh, rowdy as I was hoping with it because it was winter, so most of the high alpine was closed. But yeah, that was that was kind of my plan with the hardtail too, is like have the full suspension available, but you know, if I was going to be traveling somewhere and i knew i could get away with it i would take the hardtail totally for sure i've gone to uh with my hardtail i've gone the farthest was uh florida to santos trails and that bike uh, did pretty well over there there's really not that much elevation but everything's just smooth and flat and yeah it's just definitely. great riding over there yeah I, I definitely think that i'll be using this bike in more locations than I might have thought when I first got it. But I also think that these bikes, there's a lot more things you have to take into consideration, like air pressure, um, line choice is so much more important. But I do think that that's part of the topic. And uh, also, you know, Mike, tell us about, you know, your thoughts about why you would buy a hardtail. And um, you have a good reason. And we got some new people on the line over here now. Why, um, 
why did you get yours? If you have a good reason. You, 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 you did something that none of us did with our bikes. So, so enlighten the viewers. Let's see that frame. Yeah, well, let's see the frame. Unless, 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 I'm sorry, unless you want to do an unboxing on your own channel, which is very, very fair. So I shouldn't have said anything before. So. I, I don't have time for that. <laughs> uh, well, I'll just say quickly. So, you know, like my first bike back into biking was a hardtail. But I think now the reason it was even more appealing, so the tire inserts I think is going to solve a lot of the chatter issues that was uncomfortable. But with one by drive trains and, and cheap droppers, I think those two things alone make hardtails so bulletproof and really price effective too. Those two changes make the enjoyment of any bike better. But now you can have that, you know, even you say there's some channels people buy a full bike for 600 bucks, you put a $250 dropper post on it, you know, it's probably one buy or if not convertible to two buy with a chain ring and maybe a cassette, you know, you're definitely under $1,000 and you have an awesome bike that can go just about anywhere. Yeah, yeah. I, th I think the drivetrains are a big part of it too because I'm telling you, man, with the one by system and the lack of suspension, I don't hit anything anymore. Like, I mean, there's no pedal strikes. There's, I, you know, unless I'm hit going over a log or something, there's no, I mean, because you, you can't, you can't dip. So you can do some pretty, it's almost like in some signs, some some sense, more fun to go through rock gardens because I can go through some pretty wicked crap now because the bike doesn't doesn't there's no suspension really you know Man. you you, you have talk to talk about a lot. challenge go to Austin and ride the green belt on a hardtail that'll get you that'll get you into <laughs> almost uh, you know trials bike territory wow yeah that's that, that, that's that's a good point now something else I noticed on on my hardtail was the fact that even though it's a heavier bike, even though it's a pretty much, you know, balls to the wall type of bike, um, you really get a lot of um, like, like propulsion out of every single uh, pedal. Like even good full suspension bikes that have like pro pedal and great linkage or this or that, it's still gonna bob a little bit when you pedal. And the hardtail just simply, it simply can't. So, man, let me tell you, every time I slam that pedal down, the bike goes forward. I mean, like, it, you just feel the difference. I mean, you know, uh, your thoughts, right? I mean, pretty much. I, I agree with that. It definitely makes you feel stronger once you switch back. Yeah, for sure. Climbs a little bit, well, a lot better, I would say. Yeah. It's definitely a lot more efficient. Uh, the plus size tires definitely help. That was one thing I loved about running three inch tires on my Ragley uh, when I had it. I could climb anything uh, on smaller tires. It's hit or miss. You know, sometimes a mm -hmm. good full suspension bike, um, you know, can offer a little bit more traction. But you know, then once again, it comes back down to teaching you how to be a better rider. On hardtail, you can't, you know, sit and hope that your suspension grips everything. You have to know how to balance your weight and not put too much point. power down. Because yeah, it's so efficient. You can put down too much power. Then you spin out on an incline, and if you're clipped in, yeah, that's a fun time. <laughs> yeah, well, that's again where we get back to tire pressure because of the fact that um, when I first took this bike out, I didn't want to go too low because I didn't want to get pinch flats and stuck out there because I don't even carry tubes anymore. So I didn't want to deal with that, and I was bouncing. And the other thing too is when you have too much tire pressure, your tire doesn't um, doesn't doesn't roll over and mush over something. It hits it. It hits something. Every time you hit a rock, you're, you're, you're almost so a little less pressure and your tire morphs over something and rolls over. But I didn't want to take that chance. So I'm really pretty stoked to get this bike out on the trail on some of the more rockier things because it's going to make a huge difference. And um, just like you were saying, Joe, you are going to have to learn how to ride it differently. But anyway, I, I'm, I'm going to shut up here. I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to click on Mike and leave it on him because he's going to open up his new frame. So go ahead, buddy. Un unbox so I can get I can get extra hits out of this video. Show <laughs> us. All right. Well, they actually shipped it in the box. My unmuted. You can hear me, right? right. Yeah, yep, we hear you. We hear you. It is an NS big bikes frame. So Black Friday special. Um, gotta say, it was like two hundred bucks for the frame. So I just kind of had to do it. As much as I say, support your local bike shop when you're going to buy something normal. But uh, my my local bike shop does not carry this because. Sounds like it's very similar to 
Joe's Chrome Mag. It's actually 65 degree head angle. Is that black? It looks like a black frame. That's black, right? It's murder. Yeah, it's murder black. Nice. Murder. <laughs> Now, folks, for the for the for the people that are just jumping on, oh, it looks really nice. Mike, tell tell them about what your plan is, because some people just joined in again. What what's your plan with this frame? So I the the kicker for this was that every spec is the same as my bike, except for the headset. C tube is the same. The uh, wheels the same because I'm non boost. My my normal full suspension bike is a fifty ten from a it's a twenty fifteen frame, so it's all the older uh, geometry stuff. And everything's going to fit directly in this. So for the winter, I'm going to swap my whole drivetrain, wheels, fork, dropper post, and uh, see how much I like it. I mean, it's got a couple of bottle cage mounts. I believe, yeah, it's even internal routing for the dropper post on this thing. Uh, it is aluminum. It's not steel. Um, I would have, if I was going like full price looking for the frame, I think I probably would have gone with a steel hardtail because I, I would imagine the extra compliance would be nice, but um, I haven't actually ridden a steel hardtail mm -hmm. um, in the trail, so it's definitely something I want to check out. Like, uh, like Joe's For $200, book. I don't care what it's made out of. Yeah, I agree. I agree. <laughs> that's that's, that's good. good. Yeah, really. Totally agree. It looks good. I mean, for 200 bucks, it's worth doing, like you said, mess around with it over the over the winter. Yeah, uh, I want to say I put $200 worth of maintenance in a full suspension bike over the winter anyway, because like Andy, I'm through bearings and links and squeaks and brakes. Yeah. And <laughs> How big of a fork can that frame take? Uh, it can take up to a 150. So right nice. now my pike is set at 140. I'm just going to leave it at 140. Um, yeah. I figure if it's 65 degree head angle, maybe one for it be a little bit steeper. Around here, I mean, I'm in Long Island. I don't know if most people know that or not, but uh, it's pretty flat. Um, we have a couple technical features, if you call, dug in out of like <laughs> sand caves, but we don't have any, you know, sustained downhill so 65 is a bit much but that's fine i'll just i've ridden plenty of slack bikes it doesn't really bother me i know some people are like oh it's so unruly it's gonna be a fun bike though yeah. 200 dollars that's a that's a ton. yeah you kind of you kind of almost have to do it you know because that, that yeah. especially for what you wanted to do that's going to be awesome that's going to be really awesome in fact you're probably going to end up like you said just going out and getting a new full suspension and leaving that the way it is because that's going to be sick yeah, yeah I'm, I'm hoping to like it so and i've also you know full suspension i've demoed a couple bikes this year and i think the market's at such a place that i mean i don't even have the budget saved up to go get one so that has to happen but mm -hmm. i couldn't even decide right now if i went out today if i said i had five thousand dollars ready to go i don't even know what i like best i almost every bike i like i like for a specific reason like i just ripley felt awesome the ripmo felt awesome every santa cruz i ride feels awesome it's like <laughs> You know, Florida <laughs> Yeti, that feel awesome. Like, well, how do you even make a choice? So, now, that's the dilemma like my buddy's in. He cracked his frame on Sunday, and he can't. He has to get a new frame, and he has no idea what to get. He's looking at the site. He's looking at the Ibis. He's looking at a hardtail. He's looking at everything. There's so much out there now. Yeah, yeah. There's there's, there's quite there's quite a bit. In fact, sometimes the reason why you buy a bike is whatever bike you got on the best deal. You know, uh, you know, mm -hmm. a buddy of mine just got a really good uh, good deal. On his uh, new um, uh, high tower, I think it was the high tower he got, um, uh, Chris. And part of the reason was just it was just such a good good deal, and almost anything you get within a particular price range is just going to be good nowadays. Yeah, for sure. All right, guys, we are just about the top of the hour. I don't want to draw this out too much because the fact that I think we had a really good show today, we covered a lot of good content. I think we talked about why you should get a hardtail. Um, I think we talked about why we bought our hardtails, which is something I wanted to make sure we covered. Uh, I think we offered some people some good tips, you know, about, you know, air pressure and picking your lines and different, different, um, materials that hardtails are built out of. So all in all, I mean, is there anything specific, like again, hardtail specific, you think we might've left out to, to close this thing out with, I don't want to leave anything out, but I always like to leave the video where it is kind of like peaked and doing well. And I think we did a good job tonight. Definitely. Um, I don't, the only thing it, that I want to top off with is just, you know, the reestablishing that, um, even, even though a lot of us have really nice hardtails, 
you know, buy the bike that you can afford that gets you out on the trail to now um, and ride the crap out of it, ride it till it falls apart and then learn how to fix it because you can take that knowledge to the next bike. And yeah, never feel bad about the bike you have. Yeah, I agree. Well, yeah. cool. That's the, uh... the second that, I mean, it's, it's really always about the budget. I mean, get the bike that you could get, ride the hell out of it. And if you get into the sport, you're always going to start upgrading and upgrading and upgrading. I mean, look how far we've all come. I mean, we've all started from crappy $500 bikes and i never thought I'd spend six grand on a bike to tell you the truth. <laughs> Yeah. Some fucking way. I was gonna buy a motorcycle and <laughs> I got a bicycle. If you guys listen to the podcast on the Mountain Bike uh, Radio Network, which uh, Gene has his own show on there too, um, mm -hmm. one, the one called The Path, they always end their podcast with uh, "Love the bike you ride." And I think that's a, a great uh, slogan. That that is that is, that is a very very good way to way to end that. I think you should. You know, definitely, folks. Remember, you know, love the bike you ride. I think the best bike you have is the one that gets you out of the house and on the trails. That's probably the best bike you have because it gets you off your ass because we need to do more of that. And, um, you know, I really appreciate you all watching. We had, you know, over 60 people here thinking that we had something good to talk about. So I guess we did. It was a good topic. And I want to thank Andy. I want to thank Joe. I want to thank Mike. And I want to thank all of you for being on the show tonight. All right, folks, uh, keep the party on the pedals. I want to just one more last time, Andy, Joe, Mike, you know, I want you to say goodbye and again, mention your channels again. I want to make sure everybody knows where you came from and what you guys do for the community. So just plug yourself one more time. I just want to make sure everybody hears about you. Again, my name's Andy, uh, 732 MTB. If you're in the Jersey area, follow me on Instagram and let's ride together. Right on. Uh, yeah, my name's Joseph Trail Features in the Colorado area. Um, and lately I seem to be focusing on more budget friendly options. So if you're interested in that, go check out my channel. Mike. Mike likes trails on YouTube and Instagram. And uh you guys hear me? Yeah, we hear you. <laughs> <laughs> And I just want to point out for anybody who knows Andy that 73 MTB, there's also two of them. There's also Junie. So if you're like the rest of us, you know, be confused every once in a while. You walk yeah, in yeah, yeah. and I'm like, wait, it's a different guy. <laughs> they are shared. I just shared out of them. And so hopefully we're gonna be watching a build video pretty soon on Mike Likes Trails, right? Because he got that new frame. So let's see what that's gonna be like with bringing everything over. And we'll be hearing more about uh, trail features adventures with building out his new bike when he gets his frame in um, the newer version. I'm assuming you're going to have a video of that because that's why we do all this. If there's anything we can record and put on a video footage. You know, I can't wait to see Joe like put carbon wheels and like those <laughs> crazy group set on that GT and make it look sick. I don't think I'll ever get that insane with the, the full suspension, but you know, no? I, I have some interesting plans for it. Well, we'll be watching you. All right, folks, look, hey, also, I forgot, have a happy Thanksgiving. That's the other reason why I want to make sure I did this early this week, because I know it's going to get a little crazy. So everyone have a great Thanksgiving. Keep the party on the pedals, my friends. Thank you so much for joining in, and we will catch you on the next video and on the next Bike Chat show. Good night, everyone. Bye-bye. Peace.